All right, my friends on YouTube. So I had a few questions about this uh, 389 GTO that I made here. Little pun there. Uh, if anybody car guys, you know what I'm talking about. Well, the reason I did this is I cut them off a little longer than a 38 long colt would be, so that they wouldn't be be able to be put into a 38 long colt if somebody found my brass at the range and looked just measured it. And the reason for that is these are going to be hot. They're going to be a lot hotter than a 38 uh, long colt will be able to handle. These are going to be loaded to probably 38 super area speeds for IDPA shooting. Now the reason that I'm doing this is this is a normal moon clip for the Chiapa Rhino. These are 38 or 357 Magnums. 38 Specials are about the same daggum way. So you got them in there, you try to drop them in, hold it up, you got to kind of spin it and get it right and to get it to drop in. These, as you can tell, they all stay in spot and drop right in. All you got to do is kind of almost throw it at it and they fall right in. That's the beauty of a 9mm revolver or a 45 ACP revolver is it's a short stumpy little package the bullets stay together they don't you mean if you push on them they don't really conform very much they still got to have some wiggle but when you go to drop them in they just drop in like that and this is just a stock Chiapa Rhino there's no chamfering to the cylinders nothing if you do some chamfering to the cylinders you're talking about being able to throw them from up here it'd be able to do it. But you can see I'm dropping it from pretty good ways away, you know, see if I can get you from the side here. I'm dropping them from about that far and they're dropping right in. A lot of that has to do with the 9mm bullet that I'm putting on it. I'm using a 124 grain because that's the, uh, seems to be the lightest one in order to make power factor that I can get out of here. 115 would probably do it too using a four inch barrel instead of like a five inch uh, 1911 so I need a different charge but it is 38 super so or basically charge wise is 38 super but as you can see it says 38 special on the end they're just short so I'm at right now I'm cutting them to about 800 800 thousands so I'll show you my quick process here on how I'm doing this so what I've got, this chop is a mess. Let me get it here. I've just got my uh, lathe set up with my distance with a part off tool. Looks like I turned off my my uh, lathe. So let me stop and get it turned back on. Okay, simple little video here, and I'm just going to you know add this to the other one. Just turn on a lathe. Let me make sure I got that pipe. Always check your lathe before you do anything meal too. And the jaws on this little mini lathe here, and this is great for working uh, brass and things like that because the chuck's not very big. And it actually does a pretty good job on a little bit bigger stuff, but I like it for this kind of stuff. But see the, the grooves in the jaws, you see them there against my finger, that rim fits in there perfect, and that gives you a stop. So you know where to put it in each time. Just turn her on. Pretty good RPM running there. Come into it. I was using a little chop saw. And uh, it was boogering up the ends of them pretty bad. Just kind of let it turn. If you do it really gently and not just run into it and part it off, it doesn't seem to mess up the end of the brass. Alright, back this out. I'll get this one out and show you what I mean, not mess up the end of the brass. If you part off some things that are this thin and you just ram into them, they have a tendency to mess up the ends. But you see, that looks like it just come out of a trimmer. It's perfectly level. I mean it's it's ready to load just like that. I'll deburr the edges with a you know the little chamfering tool, but other than that, that sucker is ready to load. And you just bang them out. Uh, you know, I got a bucket of them. 
The other problem you will run into if you're loading these is uh, the moon clips are kind of finicky. In that I mean you have to go through and sort your brass. Because if you'll notice these, if I can get one to do it, they will just almost fall out. And this is just what I had just to show you, but that's what happened there is that one fell out. The, um, see, they're just barely in there. You can almost you can just take and spin your finger and they'll come right out. But you can, uh, if you go through your brass and sort it properly, like I'm doing here, like all this, uh, all this brass, this actually fits in there tight. And it's just the make of the brass. I mean, you almost got to, you got to see it ain't even going in there. See, it snaps in and then it stays. And even if you have those, yes, I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just shoot 38 Special because they're a little bit shorter. You still have this problem here. See how far it falls over? So it still won't load in. This is just a, uh, this is the best way I've found to do it. And uh, without having to buy another $1,000 Chiaparano, if anybody's ever priced one, they're pretty freaking expensive. And the uh, only place I've been able to find the moon clips has been TK Customs. Um, but uh, I had to make a set of dies because 38 uh, Smith & Wesson is actually, they're actually a little wrong for these. So what I'm using is a 38 special size, or a 38 special size and die. I took a 38 special seating die, seating crimp die, and turned the bottom of it off enough that it'll actually come down on these and crimp. And then I'm using just a uh, a 30 uh, nine millimeter charge die on my Lee press, and it's it's banging them out pretty good. And I'm loading them with some H110 powder just to uh, really get them going. All right, thanks for watching.